Right, we're going to start. We're going to start in a minute or two. We're just going to let a few more people join. Uh, then I'll do a quick introduction, and then we'll, we'll hand over to University of South Wales to talk about the allied health courses. Right, let's, uh, let's kick this off, right? So good evening, everyone. My name is Mitesh, and I'm from Success at School. And I'd like, like to welcome you to this webinar we're hosting with the Uni University of South Wales. Tonight's topic is around allied health. Now, allied health ranges from the emergency response to speech therapy, and you're gonna learn a lot more from our speakers tonight. We have a number of speakers tonight covering six allied health courses. These are nursing, occupational therapy, physiotherapy, operating department practitioners, midwifery and social work. I'm going to hand over to Oliver, Oliver Stacey shortly. He's part of the University of South Wales student recruitment team. Thank before, you very much. Oh, sorry, is it? Sorry, before, before that, just a bit of housekeeping. Tonight's webinar is going to be recorded. If you have any questions, I'd ask you to write them in the chat as we go through and we'll do a Q&A session at the end. We have we have over 150 people on this webinar, so we'll do our best to answer as many questions as we can. Finally, if you're having any technical issues, and we've just had a couple where people are saying you can't hear the sound very well, um, we can't. We're not going to be able to necessarily help with that because this is a third-party software, and we we don't have like technical expertise to like change settings, etc. For for your for, for each individual. So sorry about that in advance. I'll hand over to Ollie now. Thank you, Mitesh, and thank you so much for joining us this evening, everyone. I appreciate um, it's quite a long day with a 6.30 webinar, and hopefully this will be really useful in giving you an insight into what we do at the University of South Wales, but also just the, the diversity of the, the careers that are available to you in the healthcare professions. Um, so when we talk about the allied health professions, we're talking about a broad uh, range of different careers with over 1 million staff. So you can th see things right the way through from sort of science and therapeutic areas to admin estates. Um, and we're going to be looking much more at sort of that frontline healthcare, um, working with patients and those different types of skills from a variety of different practitioners. Uh, in terms of the NHS, it's the largest employer in Europe. Um, so there's so many different options and pathways that our wonderful staff um, have been involved with. And this just gives you a little bit of an idea um, of some of the careers that we're going to be um, you might think about. And this this talk might spring you to look at other things on top of that. And it's really just about giving you an idea of some careers that you might be quite familiar with and how they sort of work and what the course would be like, but also introducing um, a much wider range of courses um, that you might not necessarily have considered before. Um, so you're very much uh, in safe hands in terms of starting to explore that journey around the healthcare professions. So just very briefly with NHS courses, and particularly if you're studying in Wales, um, it's well worth considering some of the funding benefits that you'll gain. Um, if you work in Wales for two years after your graduation, um, that you'll have your tuition fees covered. You'll also get a means tested bursary, which is basically a free money based on how much your, your parents earn, as well as a grant of £1,000. Um, and you'll have a significantly reduced um, student finance Wales loan. If you're going to study in England um, to do your course, you'll also get a £5,000 training grant. Um, so that's slightly different depending on where you choose to study. Um, and obviously, when you look back through the recording, you can have a look there of where you'd go to claim that finance um, and compare, because I know that can be a big part of this decision um, of, of going through that training process. In terms of why the University of South Wales, um, there's three themes I'm just going to touch upon, which are going to be covered much more um, in each of our course discussions. Really, the first thing is a focus on preparation for your career and making you as employable and as confident going into the workplace as possible. We've got some excellent placement opportunities and wonderful industry partners and also our student experience. And I believe our location makes us a unique place to study um, and enjoy um, the, the start of your health career. 
So in terms of some of the things that you will do in terms of preparation for your career, you'll have lots of applied learning opportunities. So it's not just a case of learning theory throughout all of these courses right from the outset. You're going to have a high percentage of time on placement and lots of opportunities work, working in some really immersive learning environments, um, such as our Hydra Minerva Simulation Centre there, which is decision making um, suite. And you have a variety of assessment styles. It's much broader in that sense than perhaps what you've experienced um, through A-levels and college. In terms of placements, there's a couple of examples of some of the, the partners that we work with and some of the opportunities that you gain. And we're really keen that you see as broad a range of placements as possible um, to sort of open up different ideas about where you might want to place yourself after finishing your course. And lastly, I'm just going to touch upon student experience. Um, the University of South Wales, you're uniquely placed um, with some beautiful scenery from breathtaking beaches, mountains, but also you've got Cardiff on your doorstep. We've got some wonderful sporting facilities and over 50 societies at the University of South Wales, which all of our students have opportunities to access. We've got some excellent support and well-being. Um, all around your course in terms of through our students union and um, through the university itself, but also some of the, the placement um, support that we've got through our different courses, which I'm sure my team will touch upon. Um, I'm going to sort of drop back in at the end and sort of chair some of the Q&A for some of our um, excellent panellists. But we're now going to have a little five minute uh, dip into all of our different courses so you can get a little bit more of a feel of what that would be like. So Maria and Pamela, I'm going to pass over to you um, and we're going to have a little look at nursing. Hi, thanks, Ollie. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Maria Parry, and I'm the um, course leader for the Bachelor of Nursing programme at University of South Wales. Uh, we're going to spend about 10 minutes chatting to you about um, nursing. Um, I leave Pamela to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Pamela Davis, one of the lecturers here at the University and the course leader for the Postgraduate Diploma in Nursing. So um, we thought we'd start um, and get you to think about why you might choose USW and why you might choose USW um, for your nursing uh, choice. That Slides are not moving. I don't know what I've done. They all look funny. What can you see? Oh. OK, I can see. It. There you go. Yeah, there we are. Excellent. Um, yeah, so one of the reasons why you, you, you might consider to, to think about USW as a, as a choice for your nursing programme, one of the reasons, because there are many, would be the inspirational teaching. And I think it would be really um, useful, if you can, to come along to an open day and actually see some of um, us in person, see some of the um, facilities in person. So. As a group of um, uh, academics, we are all also clinicians and it, we all have a very different background. So, for example, we're all um, many people are experts in their field. So we've got people who um, are clinically still working um, and are publishing on a regular basis um, in relation to recent things within that are happening within nursing. We've all got very different backgrounds. Um, so Pamela, for example, has got an ITU background um, and as I'm sure she'll tell you at some point has worked on cruise ships, quite a few stories there. My background is hospice care. So we've got lots of different specialists in lots of different areas um, who will share their experiences and knowledge with you. Um, it is really important for us that we remain current and we remain clinicians at heart and that is the most important. We will give you hands on learning, um, giving you the knowledge and skills that you need in order to go out and work as a um, student nurse. So the, the, the way that the course is structured, we allow you to have blocks of theory and practice that we give you the skills that you need in order to take them to your clinical placement. So that inspirational teaching is the first reason that, that I think um, you may want to choose us. The second reason then would be our excellent facilities and I would really encourage anyone to come along to an open day and be able to see that kind of facilities in person because they really are they really are incredible. 
Um, from the slide, you can see lots of different parts of our simulation centre. So we've got quite a large simulation centre. Um, we've got a ambulance, as you can see. So we've got an ambulance simulator which sits in our emergency department, which really helps with um, kind of that transition from that out of hospital to end of hospital care. So we use that with all fields of nursing and we use it with midwifery. You can see a big, massive, um, do you call that a fire engine? So we do lots of um, lots of learning with other departments. So it's really important for us to have that kind of interdisciplinary learning from each other and with each other. So that's from one of our mass casualty events that we host in the university. And um, pre-COVID, we started doing them twice a year with our nursing students, and it really does help get that kind of a sense of a hospital the way it would run during an emergency. We've got a community flat, which was an addition a few years ago, where we've got a fully running two bedroom flat. There's so much care now that is transmitted into the community and um, COVID's almost sped up some of the care that we have in the community now. So it's really important that our facilities emulate that so that you are ready for practice. The, this is a safe environment for you to learn and for you to grow and for you to practice your skills so that you feel more confident and more competent when you go into clinical practice. Um, so it's a really good kind of safe, safe space. We've got our midwifery unit at the top. So we've got one of our midwives here who will discuss that later, but I always love going into the midwifery department. You can see there's a home birthing there behind behind one of our lovely students. So our facilities are really, they're, they're really vast and I would encourage anyone to kind of come along because they almost speak for themselves and the learning that you get in there is is really amazing. Maria already touched on a little bit of kind of preparation for your career. Because in nursing, it's really important that this isn't just a three year course and we let you go and you know what happens after happens. We're trying to make you competent so that when you leave this course, you are a registered professional, you're a registered nurse at the end of that. Um, and everything we do within our theoretical learning and in your practice learning kind of builds you up to that end port point where you are that competent, confident practitioner. We've got excellent rates of employment for nursing. You, don't, you only need to open a newspaper or turn on the, the television to see how much nursing is struggling and has struggled through the pandemic. So there, there is a big cry out there for nurses. So we have got excellent rates of employment. Um, there's loads of different experiences that you can have in this course. And we've got 50% practice, 50% theory. And within that 50% practice, we've got varying opportunities for you to experience. And you've got that opportunity to choose a placement area as well. So if there's somewhere you haven't seen, you've got that opportunity to choose one. We've got different areas of placement across kind of Southwest and Mid Wales. Um, and the reason that we've got such varied um, placements is so that you can get the biggest the widest you know, array of experiences that we can physically give you. So it is a very wide area. And we link in with loads of different health boards, but we also link in with private organisations as well, which is really important when we look at things like our mental health nurses and our learning disability nurses that we do link in with private organisations. That leads us nicely on to what we offer at USW. So we are, um, one of the only universities that, um, that offer all four fields of nursing. Um, so we offer adult, um, learning disability, mental health and child. We've added our midwifery colleagues in there because we can't forget about them. And it's really important that you know what field you're interested in before you apply, if you can. That's really, really key because an awful lot of your application will be based on knowing your field. They are very distinct, okay? So, um, they also have uh, very different numbers. So I'll just give you some idea. 450 adult places, uh, 38 learning disability, 120 mental health, um, 47 child. So you need to bear that in mind before you apply. You muted. It's like a schoolgirl error. <laughs> 
So what you will learn here at the university really is going to help build you into that clinical practitioner that we want you to be at the end. So we give you the fundamental theoretical knowledge that you will need when you're in clinical practice. So it's different things that you will learn here, some of which are things around um, disease and disease pathology. Health promotion is really important um, in the 21st century. Health promotion is key to try and stop disease from happening. There's more emphasis on pharmacology. We learn a lot about evidence-based practice and about being an educator because you will be educating the next, next series of nurses. So there's a lot of different theoretical components that you will do and that will help you when you go into practice so that you can consolidate that and be that competent practitioner at the end. Oh, that's me, Am I do I'm doing this one too. Key points, so key points then. You have to be of good health and character. This is a professionally regulated course, so you will need uh, to do a DBS and you will need occupational health clearance to do this course. We often get asked if there's a list of criminal def cr criminal offences and if there is a list of medical conditions that you cannot have to do this course. And we always say no, we don't have any lists. Everything's on an individual basis. This is a three year full time program unless you do the postgraduate diploma, which is a two year full program full term program. You will need to engage in the course and it is a compulsory a compulsory attendance and that goes with theoretical learning and your placement. And when you're on your clinical placements, it will be 37 and a half hours a week and it will be shifts such as weekends and nights um, and it will be across a range of organisations and settings. Your skills are going to be assessed when you're in university and when you're in practice because you have to be that competent practitioner and I think I must have said competent practitioner about a hundred times because it's really important because it's the safety of people at the end of the day so we always have to make sure that we assess you in university and assess you when you are in clinical practice as well. So we currently have the bursary which Ollie touched on earlier so you can opt in for the bursary which means your fees will be paid. I think just to end, we'd love to have an application from you. You can apply to us via UCAS um, under the usual uh, UCAS deadlines, which is the end of January. Um, you could put a direct application in if you wanted to apply just to us. Um, we interview face to face. So if we like you, we read your personal statement. They are incredibly important. They're all about you and they're incredibly important. We want to read them, we want to know about you. It's that is what will get you an interview. When you look at those numbers for the smaller fields, a good personal statement to get an interview is really key. And then hopefully, after we've interviewed you, we like you, then we'll get to see you on our course. Thanks everyone for listening. Please remember if you, if you want to learn a little bit more, then please follow us on Twitter and follow us on Instagram. So thank you very much. Our students manage the Instagram account, so it's definitely worth a follow. Thanks, everybody. Speak later. Hi, I'm Ruth Matheson, um, introduced by my side there as Occupational Therapy. And I'm going to ask Ollie just to play a little video um, in a minute in order to give you an idea of Occupational Therapy and what it has to offer. Um, and that's really because it's perhaps a lesser known um, profession than nursing. And in answer to Sophie's um, uh, thing in the chat, uh, comment in the chat. This might give you, Sophie, a little bit of an indication of, of the sorts of courses and Reese to follow as well that you might be interested. So, Ollie, if I can get you to play the video, it's about 48 seconds long, and then we'll have a chat. Yeah, I'm going to call it right now. I think I found the single biggest productivity hack of 2021. It's this Google Chrome extension called. Occupational therapists help people live their best lives, overcoming challenges at home, school, work, and everywhere else. The Royal College of Occupational Therapists has a vision 
We want people everywhere to value the life-changing power of occupational therapy. We will grow understanding and enhance the profile of occupational therapy, attract new people to the profession, and help more people get the occupational therapy they need. We will have. Thank you, Ollie. Um, so I just wanted to introduce you to that in order for you to get an idea of um, the real heart of occupational therapy, which is about enabling you as individuals and communities and populations to be able to do the things that you need to do, the things that you're expected to do and the things that you want to do. So occupational therapy is about enhancing the power of occupation as a means of as a as a therapeutic tool in order to um, help individuals uh, gain the most independence as possible. So we're really excited because this is a new part time course. So it's a four year course that USW is going to offer. And it's going to be over um, 18 and a half hours per week over a four we a uh, four year period. And that really is to provide the opportunity for people that wouldn't necessarily be able to um, participate in a full time course, the opportunity to work alongside their study. Um, and that's a really exciting thing because that means that they can bring in all the sorts of experience that they're having in the rest of their lives into the actual occupational therapy course as well. So similarly to nursing, this is a fully funded course. Um, it has a theory component and a practice component. So it has a thousand hours of practice and we will be looking to have practice placements in hospitals, but also in the community and in role emerging uh, opportunities. So that might be prisons, it might be with the homeless, it might be within charities. Um, so it's a wide ranging profession because, as you can imagine, everywhere that um, that employees uh, occupational therapists in order to. Um, in order to to have that opportunity to input into people's lives, actually have the opportunity to grow the profession into those into those areas. So we're looking at in the course a life cycle approach. Um, so we'll be looking at uh, children, older adults, adults uh, right the way through the life cycle. And um, in that life cycle approach that we will looking, we will be looking at all sorts of different conditions and all sorts of challenges and barriers to for people um, to, that people can't enable them to do their own occupations that they want to do. So we're really looking at the messiness of life as to what's actually hampering people um, and what's not enabling them to carry out the things that they want to do. Um, we are looking at a challenge based learning curriculum. Uh, so we're looking at um, gaining challenges from the community and your learning being really spurred on by those opportunities and by those case studies that provide that um, provide that learning opportunity. So it is about being really current and um, and uh, learning from practice and learning, putting you back, back out into practice in order to um, hone your skill as an occupational therapist. Um, so we're looking at prevention, we're looking at rehabilitation and we're looking at how we enable you to become occupational therapists to make a real impact on individuals, on communities and on populations. So taking on board what Maria and um, Pamela were saying as well, that we will be learning with nurses, with physiotherapists in the simulation suite and um, having the opportunity to really uh, learn together and with each other and learn about each other in order so that we can bring the best to the service user. Thank you. Reese, are you, are you there ready to go?
Sorry, it looks like he might have dropped off. Let me see if I can find him in. If not, we'll move on. Um, no, to we, we, he, he should be. He should be back on actually. Reese, you you should be able to control the mute and camera. Yeah, now. it's just appeared, Ollie. That's why it was a bit Perfect. of a mess. Cool. So, sorry, I couldn't access anything until you let me <laughs> have control. Um, yeah, hi everybody. Um, I'm delighted to speak to you today, um, mainly because this is the first part-time physio course that will be introduced to Wales. Um, and I think it's a welcome addition to what is already um, a good breadth of courses in Wales. But the part-time nature of this course, I think, is a key distinguishing feature here. Um, so this is a fourth four-year part-time course. Um, it is in many, it's, it's being developed in line with occupational therapy and ODP at the moment. So that is fantastic for us because it affords us fun, a real clear opportunity to try and embed learning with other healthcare courses as we are designing and developing the course curriculum. So we're not going to try to force this type of learning into the programme. It's going to be a naturally organic developed part of the learning experience. And that's massively helpful because contemporary practice in physio is all about working in teams of practitioners. We call them multidisciplinary teams. And those teams are what you would see in hospital. Now, during the course, one of the key distinguishing features of a physio program is that you'll spend a minimum of a thousand hours of your time with us out in clinical placements in different settings. And on the physio course, there will be nine different placements that you will have the opportunity to go on. Each placement is a month in duration, and you will spend that period in a different discipline or different specialist area within physiotherapy. So you get a massive breadth of experience across all these different interesting, fascinating areas of physiotherapy, even areas you wouldn't have heard of, and even areas you might not have necessarily aspirations to want to work in yourself. But I can assure you that all of the learning is transferable across all the placements, and you'll be surprised actually what avenues physio can take you down once you start getting into the different options and, and placements. One of the beauties of the course is that the intake and the group size is going to be small for physio. So that's going to allow us to do some really excellently cool things. Lots of immersive practice and simulation based training that massive big groups will struggle to do as well. And we will have the option of being able to do this with a, and obviously the size of the classes and, and the intakes being a little smaller means we get a lot more personal attention for the students, a lot more contact time. Um, a lot more kind of guided learning. So that's really, really important. The overall assessment philosophy of the physio program is that I am desperately keen for all assessments to be meaningful to practice. I am not a fan of assessments for the sake of assessments. I think if we're doing an assessment, it has to be for a targeted reason. And the assessment structure has to reflect in some way how you will practice as a physio once you qualify. So a lot of the exams are practical exams. There are a lot of simulated based um, environments, presentations, the types of skills you'll need as a physio when you qualify. We've got access to a ton of those facilities you've already been introduced to by nursing and OT, and we'll get to access all of those. Though the simulation facilities and the sports facilities in USW are unbelievable. And I have worked in multiple yeah. universities before, and I can assure you that these facilities are state of the art. Could I have the next slide, Ollie, please? So from a, we pride ourselves on contemporary practice in USW, and one of the things that we're really keen for is to move away from these traditional styles of teaching. We want a fully immersive, oh, can you go black up? Yes, yeah, a fully immersive blended learning experience um, where we have interprofessional education built into the core of the program. And we'll be working with and alongside nursing and occupational therapists and chiropractors and sports th and sports therapists, strength conditioning coaches, you name it. We're going to be mixing with all of those, having shared learning opportunities. The blended learning approach is critical here because the way in which we learn, the way in which we teach has changed and COVID has driven some of that change. But those changes in many cases have been for the better. And we want to embrace those changes and, and work more flexibly so we offer students a lot of opportunity to do a lot of the preparation at home, 
And when we bring them in, it's all about practice and simulation. So that's one of the key things about this course I'm keen to get across. And of course, from all of the student reports that we have in USW, warm and friendly staff seems to come out time and time again. And I hope that you get that feeling in our presentations this evening. So I welcome all applications to the course um, and we look forward to helping you become a, a, a graduated registered physiotherapist at the end of it. I look forward to seeing you all soon. Many thanks. Me next. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, cool. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Craig Griffiths. I'm the course lead for operating department practice, which is a profession that none of you have heard before. So I'm going to use five minutes to try and convince you that you want to become an operating department practitioner. And then you can always go away and look at for different courses, hopefully the one at USW. Um, so why would you want to become an operating department practitioner? Well, uh, I've got two stories really to tell you about two different student experiences that we've had. Um, the first one is to do with um, Kate. Uh, there we are. And we're going to talk about here about the humdrum. So whatever you want to do in your career, whether it's operating department practice or anything else, the thing you really have to consider is the humdrum. What do I mean by that? I mean, what is the day to day? Not just the sexy, exciting stuff that you're going to be sold at all these kind of things. What is the kind of boring day to day aspects of that job? Because believe it or not, whether you're a surgeon, whether you're a pilot, whether you're um, an office worker, there are different bits of your day that are going to be boring. And I'm going to kind of sell ODP to you is that I don't think there is really a humdrum for ODP all right so for instance Kate Kate is a second year student she's working in um, as a uh, scrub practitioner um, in general surgery she notices during the surgery there is a bit of bleeding going on now she knows from uh, her course where she studies extensive anatomy and physiology she knows about this part of the body here this blood cells, uh, the, these blood cell, uh, blood vessels here as part of the mesentery, they supply blood to the bowel. And if you nick one of those, if you accidentally hit one of those blood vessels, this uh, these blood vessels are connected quite closely to uh, the aorta, and that's going to cause a big bleed. So she knows this immediately just from her training she's done, from practice sessions that she'll have done in the lab with us, because we're going to have two operating theaters at um, USW. So she's already prepared to deal with what's going to happen uh, next. And so she's already thinking. And so what does she do? She knows, for instance, that we're going to have to get rid of there, there's a lack of visibility. So we're going to have to get some suction in. We're going to have to get sutures. We're going to have to get those sutures cut and ready. And so that hemostasis can be achieved. And so she uses her skills that she's developed over her course over the first two years. The theory that we've done about instrument handling, what kind of instruments are there, what they're used for. Why would you use different clamps over others? Um, she would know all about anatomy and physiology. Um, about the different tissue types that she's going to have to handle and the, the how that's relevant to um, what instruments she's going to use. And she'll hand those to her surgeon. Often the best practitioners and some students get so good that they will hand the instruments to their surgeons before the surgeons have even asked for them. And actually, that's exactly what Kate did. Um, Kate did this. Uh, the um, vessel itself was stitched up very quickly. Um, and the patient actually suffered very minimal blood loss. And it was one of those cases where the surgeon came back to Kate and gave her a compliment, said, you know, really good work, would be happy to work with her again. And that's because as an ODP, you have to learn about the human body as a machine. It's one of the most interesting things about the job, learning about the human body as a machine. Um, but actually, the other thing we have to learn about is the human as a person. Um, and that's where we've got John comes into it. Um, and John is actually doing his placement in anaesthetics in paediatrics. And he notices that um, little Susie here, we'll call her, uh, she comes in with her mummy and she's a bit scared. She's a bit scared about going off to sleep. She's a bit teary. And John is going to use his, his soft skills, the kind of skills he's developed in communicating with patients, treating them as people. And what he notices is that she has got a little toy um, butterfly. And actually this butterfly looks very much like the little drips that we put in the back of the hand. And so what he does is he explains that a little butterfly is going to land on her hand. It's going to give her a little nibble. But what they have to do is they have to give the butterfly some milk. John knows all about the drugs that are about to be given. He knows um, about the anesthetic drugs here, the propofol, magic milk, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
he knows how it works. He knows what is going to happen and he knows how to um, how he's going to reverse it. He does that with his anaesthetist. Um, again, sessions that we've done, we will do it in theory. We will do it in practice in the labs at USW before the uh, John goes out to practice. Um, the other thing that John loves about this job is what we call physiology in action. We will give a drug to this patient. They will fall asleep instantly. We give a drug to take pain away. It happens instantly. We give a drug to paralyze someone. It happens instantly. It's one of the perks of being an ODP. You see really cool effects of drugs. You see how the body works pretty much straight away. Um, John has done this several times. He's done this with a mentor under supervision. And actually, he's really, really good and really enjoys doing this with pediatric patients. Yes, we do this with, with them, but actually a whole range of patients. It doesn't just, it's not just young children who are scared of surgery. Anyone is scared of surgery. It's really important that we treat people, uh, patients, as the people they are with normal fears and, and um, uh, um yeah, no, normal fears and uh, things like that. The other thing is that, John is aware he's part of a team, which is a slide I just missed there. Um, as an ODP, you are part of a team. It's one of the best things about being an ODP. The ODP and their anaesthetist and their surgeon are kind of the, the best the best cop duos, buddy duos in all of healthcare. So why do I want to be an ODP? Well, you get to do so many because all these things I've talked about, the anaesthetic side, there's the recovery side as well, and the scrub side. There are 11 separate surgical specialties that you will do this for and that you will you will have the opportunity to experience as well as critical care. The other great thing about it is that we deal with not when I talk about drugs here, when I've got this new here, not we deal with drugs. We drill, deal with physiology in action at the point of doing something to that body, whether it be surgically repairing a knee, repairing a hip or, or giving drugs and medications. It happens instantly. You see the instant effects happening on the body. Um, and lastly, it's the care that we get to give to these patients, these patients at their most vulnerable. I always compare sort of being an ODP as sort of being like Doctor Who, which is always appropriate being in Wales. Because if you think about Doctor Who, he has about 30 seconds to three minutes to get everyone in the room to trust that he knows what he's doing. And that's essentially what you have with ODPs. Patients will walk into theatre, you've got 30 seconds to maybe a couple of minutes to trust them, get them to trust you intrinsically that you're going to do the best for them before they go off to sleep. And that's it, I think. I tried to get in there and as quickly as possible. I think I've got control now of my, um, I think so. So hi everybody, uh, my name's Sarah Aubrey. I'm the course lead and the lead midwife for education at the University of South Wales. And I'm gonna have a little chat to you about midwifery and Ollie the slides won't move on thank you so what does it mean to be a midwife then um you know everybody thinks about babies when they think about being a midwife but our you know our job doesn't just involve babies our job is uh, very much revolves around the women and the families in our care we're independent practitioners so we are what's known as autonomous practitioners so we work very independently a lot of the time on our own as well as in a team but we make our own um clinical decisions using our professional and, and clinical uh, knowledge and judgment we're experts in normality. So 75% um, of uh, births, uh, the most senior attendant in those births are midwives. So we don't see doctors, we don't see surgeons, um, they are purely midwifery led care. We are supporters during the childbirth experience, and that's a really important point to remember that this experience is all about the childbearing individual and their family. So not about us as midwives, and we're there to support women in their decision making and advocate for women uh, during pregnancy and birth. So as it says there, we care for uh, mothers, fetus, the newborn infant and their wider family. So we're there to support everybody. Um, and as I did mention, we do collaborate with other professionals. So we do work alongside doctors and nurses and physios and OTs and particularly ODPs. And that is very much part of the course as well, that interprofessional learning. Fab, next slide, please. So yeah, as I touched on before, um, you know, midwifery is, is very centred around the woman or the childbearing individual. We've got to be very mindful that not um, that we, when we talk about uh, people in our care, that um, 
not everybody will identify generally as, as a woman. So childbearing individual is the language that we generally try to use going forward. Um, and we care for um, these individuals, right, preconception sometimes, but mainly from um, about 10 weeks of pregnancy right through to about up to 28 days post-pregnancy, but it's usually about day 10 or 11 then that we're handing over to the health visitor. Fab, next slide, please. So the Battle of Midwifery course is a three year degree level programme and at the end of it is the same as nursing, you will uh, gain professional registration to the NMC. It's 50% theory, 50% practice, um, so blocks of theory and blocks of practice. Um, minimum of 2,300 hours of each to be able to um, get through the course and register with the NMC. Um, attendance is um, you know, within the faculty. So there will be sort of blended learning that Reese touched upon earlier, where you'll have some sessions where you're all together in the classroom, some sessions that will be mixed in with other professions, some sessions that will be online on similar platforms to we are now, um, and skill sessions in our simulation suite. We work with a number of partner health boards, so Crumtaf Morganog, Powys, um, Cardiff and Vale and an Iron Bevan Health Board. So you will gain lots of experience in different health boards looking at different models of care. Um, and as with nursing, as Maria and um, Pamela touched on earlier, you're assessed in both university and in practice. It's really important that um, you're assessed after in practice with your clinical skills. Um, and again, you're assessed in a variety of different ways through presentations, exams, um, practical OSCEs, um, designing of um, health promotion posters then within the university. Fab, next slide, please. Okay, so what do we expect from our, ooh, we've gone on too many. Let me go back one quickly. Don't worry if you can't, I can't get it, it won't control my- Is that right now, is that the one? Uh, I don't know if you went on too many or if you've missed one. Yeah, that's hey, the one. That's the um, right one. That's the right one. Sorry. Yeah. Sure. So, you know, I know Pamela touched on our simulation suite earlier and you really have to see it to believe it. It's a fantastic facility. So we've got um, a fully functional maternity suite and special care baby unit with incubators. Within our maternity suite, we've got mannequins that actually give birth. So you are able to practice those midwifery skills in a safe and supportive environment. Um, the other thing that is available to our students is a, an, an elective placement and that's available in the third year of the course and you can see on the bottom left hand of the screen there one of our students went out to Uganda, we've had students go to New Zealand, Australia, Canada, um, we've currently got students in Scotland. Um, so it's, you, know, you can go abroad or within the UK, again, to experience different models of midwifery care and then bring your knowledge back to share with us as academics and students. Next slide. So what do we expect from our students? So it's, it's, a, it's a hard course. It is a difficult three years. So we expect commitment. You know, as I said, you do need to achieve those 2,300 hours in both um, academia and out in placement. Determination, taking the good times with the bads. Midwifery isn't always um, happy. Um, it can be a difficult uh, profession to be in at times. So uh, determination, definitely from an academic point of view and a placement point of view. Enthusiastic, you know, as a team, we're, we're really, really passionate about midwifery and, and very enthusiastic. And I, you know, I, I hope that, you know, that comes across. Um, but you need to show that enthusiasm as well. Professionalism is really, really important. As we said, it's, a, you know, at the end of the course, you register with a professional body, the NMC, and that professionalism needs to, to follow through into more than just your 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 job and and your studies it needs to be portrayed in your in your personal life as well and again team working as we've touched upon um okay we do work in isolation but we do very much work as part of a team as well next slide so just some uh, other information to finish quickly then. So um, as it says there with regards to personal statements, there's no need to include in your personal statement your qualifications. Um, we'll see that as part of your application and it, it just takes up a lot of those words. Really, really important, you know, the difference between a nurse and a midwife um, and that we're not just there to, to deliver babies. We facilitate birth, but our job, you know, involves a lot more than just babies. Um, ensure that when you get your references that those who are giving you references know that you want to be a midwife rather than a nurse 
and, and talk to midwives, talk to student midwives, talk to mums, talk to dads, gain experience from others. We don't take preference over um, applications of students who have had healthcare experience or healthcare placements. It's about those skills that you've already got and that knowledge you've already got that you can bring into midwifery that will make you a really good midwife. And there's just some um, resources there and extra reading if you want to have a look at any of those websites. But again, do follow us on Twitter, do follow us on Facebook. Um, and I hope to welcome you to USW soon. Thank you. Hello, I think I'm on. OK, hi, I'm Michelle Kelwick. I'm uh, representing social work. I'm the course leader for social work here at the University of South Wales. Um, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about what social work is and what we expect on the University of South Wales programme. So social work then works across the lifespan from birth to death. Um, we work to improve people's lives by helping uh, people and individuals with social and interpersonal difficulties. Our main aim is about promoting human rights and well-being and helping managing risk and meeting support needs for people who live in the community. Um, we tend to work with families uh, um, who are under pressure uh, uh, right through to people with mental health problems, learning disabilities, substance and alcohol misuse, hospital discharge. Um, so the profession can be very rewarding and also um, very demanding. So at the University of South Wales, then the, the BSc in social work is run in conjunction with our five local authority partners. Um, so it's very much a joint programme with our local authority partners who host our students for the duration of their programme. So it's a three year degree, um, it's full time, um, but you're actually in college in university for approximately two to two and a half days a week when you're at university. Um, it's 50-50 practice, 50-50 university, as many of the other programmes have mentioned as well. So our local authority partners include Newport, Torvine, Rotherken and Taff, Monmouthshire and Blyna Gwent. So we offer placements you know, acro across a large area of South East Wales. So opportunities there are quite vast and placements might not necessarily be in local authority departments, but um, across voluntary agencies in the independent sector, but they are managed by our local authority um, partners. So our local authority partners are very involved in the design delivery and selection and access onto the programme. So as I've said, all our decisions that we make on this programme have to be in conjunction with our local authority partners. The course is um, an approved programme by Social Care Wales and students um, become registered social work students um, with Social Care Wales. Social Care Wales is the regulatory body in Wales that oversees um, so the social care and social work profession. So on joining the course, students register and um, sign up to the codes of practice, codes of conduct for social work. Um, could I have the next slide, please? OK, so why study social work at USW then? As I've said, it's in conjunction with our partners. We have individuals um, who use services and carers also involved in the programme. So we are very um, linked to practice. 100% um, of our social work graduates are within find employment within uh, six months of graduating the programme. So employability from this programme um, is extremely positive. As I've said, we're validated by Social Care Wales, so you will be in a position to apply to register as a qualified social worker on graduation and practice as a qualified social worker. So whilst it gives you the academic degree, it gives you that vocational qualifications as well. And as I've said, 50% of time is out on placement, 50% of time is in university. And that what that looks like is 20 day block placement in the first year and an 80 day block placement in the second year and a 100 day block placement in the third year. So a lot of commitment is required to the programme. 
attendance is key to the programme because, as I've said, it's a professionally regulated qualification. Um, so in the latter two years of the programme, you will find yourselves out on placement for the majority of your time within university. Um, but our social care, our social work lecturers are involved in that assessment of practice, will be visiting you on practice and you maintain contact with, with the university via recall days. Um, how we deliver is, is again blended with some online learning, but predominantly in class learning. We do try and use the Hydra Minerva suite that's been mentioned so far as well ourselves um, for safeguarding events um, and uh, decision making days. Um, so there is that opportunity where possible to join up with other professionals in our allied professionals um, team that does here today. So we do work alongside uh, health, police and education as part of uh, our role as social worker to prepare you for practice. So um, we, as I've said, we've got very teaching methods. We have guest speakers come in, service users and carers, practitioners. Um, just to add that variety to, to the teaching and learning experience. Um, you have the opportunity to experience a real life court situation in our moot court at Treforest. Um, and we also have safeguarding multi-agency conference days there with our with your three students across health visiting, police um, and ourselves um, in social work. You will be assigned a personal tutor. It's a demanding programme, as many of the others have mentioned here today. Um, but each student has a personal tutor who is with them for the duration of the three years on the programme. And it's that personal tutor that you have contact with whilst out on placement as well. So they are very familiar with you um, and your learning and development and any personal and support needs as well. Let's have the next slide, please. OK, then, so what sorry, we... sorry to interrupt, Michelle. I think we, we just just in terms of time, we're going to, need to take a bit of a pause just for questions. I do appreciate it. I'll leave that on there so people have got a little bit of time to. That's... That's to, fine. They can to digest. Questions. Sorry about, that. about um, that. That's no problem at all. So I'll just leave that there for you. I appreciate we've had quite a few questions. I just ask our, our presenters if you can be ready with your, your cameras and mics to come off. Um, there's a bit of a theme that I've noticed just coming up with, with particularly with year 11 students maybe asking what subjects they'd recommend. It might be more of a focus in terms of, I can see some of them specifically for medicine, but if you had a student in year 11 um, who wasn't sure maybe what to pick for A-levels and college courses, is there any subjects if they knew they wanted to be, for example, a physio or an ODP or a nurse that you'd maybe suggest would, would make it easier for them to make that transition into that particular course? Um, so I don't know if I start with, with you, Reese. is there anything particularly that you think is either an A-level or a B-tech that maybe would, would be a nice link to, to physiotherapy? Well, thanks, Ollie. I think the I think the one A-level equivalency that's stipulated across all physio courses in the UK seems to be biology. Um, and that's only because there is a, you know, a fundamental basis required for physiotherapy, which is to understand human anatomy and physiology. So fundamentally, I think you could choose biology or human biology actually, I think, is even more relevant. Um, that being said, there are a absolute endless range of possible combinations of qualifications that can be used for entry criteria but if I was going to push anybody down a particular route it would be that they would consider the biology co component of their of, of their balance as a key ingredient. Perfect and um, has anyone got anything I'll go over to, to Pamela maybe for just a slightly different perspective for different course and if anyone's got anything else to add specifically for them maybe pop a hand up for us that'd be great. So for nursing then, we don't have anything specific um, like they do in physiotherapy over things like um, sciences. There's several things that can be helpful coming into nursing. Um, so lots of BTECs around health and social care can be really helpful. Um, anything around kind of communication and maths is obviously really helpful because you need them to come into nursing. What we generally say is that nursing can be quite competitive so you want really good grades so for example if you were doing a subject that you were struggling with whereas you had another subject that you 
you excelled in but maybe you didn't feel like it was a science enough subject we would always kind of say look at look at where your strengths are and play to your strengths and always do the do the grade do the courses the modules that you think that you're going to excel in we don't don't have any specifics here but other universities do have a science specific um, element so just be mindful of that when looking at different universities but there's lots of health and social care BTECs um, going around and they're always really useful. Fantastic um, another question that's that's come up I think is a really good one about access to work experience I don't know if anyone's got any tips or or suggestions of where people could go if there's a show of hands to to get some experience within a, um, a, a healthcare setting. Sarah I'll come to you first. Um, getting work experience can be quite difficult at the moment due to the pandemic. Um, a lot of our partner health boards do offer um, a week or two work experience particularly you know I'll talk about midwifery but as I said it is quite difficult but I would you know I would say we don't necessarily or you know, certainly with when I read applications I wouldn't um, look at an application of somebody who did have work experience and favour that necessarily over somebody who didn't it's all about those skills that, as I said in my talk that you've already got that you can bring into midwifery that will make you a good midwife the communication skills the empathy and um, the teamwork in the time management the prioritization delegation those sort of things so you know I know a lot of students have been saying that they're really worried that they haven't been able to get work experience and that'll affect them but it, you know it absolutely won't I think that's really good advice about sort of transferable skills and things to be on there's quite a lot of questions about um what do I need to get into different courses and qualifications are just going to just pick some of that up for people so the first thing i would say is if you haven't been onto the ucas website that's a really good place particularly for courses that maybe we haven't been able to cover today um because we, we don't cover them at the university of south wales they are out there um but do look those up and when you go on to the course page if you look at entry requirements that will tell you what a levels you need specifically to do that course but as people have sort of said, broadly speaking, the best thing is to do subjects that you enjoy, that you're best at, um, but just make sure that you've you've checked that before you go on. And it might vary. I can see a lot of people about medicine between different universities for medicine courses. So it's maybe check worth checking two or three of those pages. Um, I've got a question about any requirements to do ODP specifically, Craig, if I come to you. Uh, yeah, so we uh, we have no set requirements. Uh, there's uh, the GCSE requirements that you have to have achieved at least a grade C or four um, for English and maths. Uh, but aside from that, we uh, the only thing we have is a, a grade requirement of a, I believe it's BBC. Um, but in terms of subjects, no, we've got no subject requirements um, for your own benefit. As Reese has kind of said, it, it's helpful if you're doing because you're going into a sciencey subject. If you do stuff like biology, um, but it's not the end of the world. We are there to kind of bring you up to speed on that. Um, so yeah, nothing, nothing specific. Thank you. Um, and we've got some other questions about um, social work. Any any subject specifically for that? So I don't know. Um, uh we don't specify sure. particular a levels but a levels in psychology sociology health and social care obviously help to provide some insight it's more around the getting the experiential hours are very important to offer that um, insight into the social care social work profession um, but in terms of subjects i'd recommend those that i just mentioned if anyone's considering a levels and I can just see this question about work placements, experience with physiotherapy. So I'm just going to pop over to you, Reese, for that one, please. Yeah, thanks, Ollie. I wanted to answer Olivia's question there because to echo Sarah's point, a, a back in the day, Olivia, you could have had ample physio experience and it would have been barrierless almost. I think the pandemic has really changed the landscape of how people access those experiences now before they apply. So what I would say is one of the one of the fantastic things about USW is that we have a contextual admissions policy. So we look at the whole person rather than just at the academics. That's really, really hugely important here because what's, what Sarah's made a point of is absolutely right, is you might not appreciate this, Olivia, but within your life, there will be things that you're doing which are already demonstrating a caring mindset and a caring approach. You might be caring for a relative, you might be caring for a loved one, you might have situations where you're taking responsibility over a sibling, 
all of those types of experiences can be drawn upon to show in your personal statement the types of qualities that we would look for in an applicant. So I would say to you, Olivia, don't be concerned necessarily about the volume of experience or practice placement experience you've had before you come. If you can get some, that's wonderful. But certainly if you can just be creative in your application and try and highlight those key features, then the people here at USW, it won't pass them by unnoticed. I can assure you of that. And we'll we'll give that a lot of kind of weight and a lot of you know understanding, of course, that you're not alone in this, Olivia, and everyone is having difficulty getting that experience. I'd also say with, with some of our courses um, on our website, if you go on, there's often little free tasters. I know certainly for something like sports therapy, which has some transferable skills for physiotherapy, using those, even if you use lots of different universities to build up that experience and extra interest, or like like the team have said about their Twitter pages, and I'd just say to you, if you've got your Twitter handles there, drop them in or your Instagrams, because those can, following those pages can give you, maybe not necessarily placements, but they can show that real interest in the subject and, and maybe give you ideas that you can start to sort of find more out about that subject. Um, we've probably got time for one more. If anyone wants feeling brave, wants to throw another question in. So we've got a question about um, admissions there. I would say the best thing to do is to look on the um, the course page for the one you're interested in. Broadly speaking, I would say yes, we would take a combination of BTECs and A levels. It would just need to be that the the grades are sufficient for the course there but definitely I can see Maria nodding at me frantically. <laughs> so just the final thing I suppose unless we get any final questions coming in as, as we're looking to finish I think is a 7.30 I'm not sure how we are on timings and um, we've got the link to our open days there if you haven't attended an open day at all before I really would recommend it. It certainly gives you an insight to university as an option. Um, all of the team will be there on our next open day on the 2nd of April. And we've got another one on the 18th of June as well. Um, and that'd be a much greater insight to our courses, including seeing the simulation suite and says well, well um, and, and find out well, even more about the courses. Thanks, Ollie. Um, there's a couple of questions on recording. So let, let me. Let me take that unless you, um, yeah, so let me just take that. So firstly, thank you for all the presenters presenting and Ollie for, you know, doing all the questions brilliantly and uh, for all our guests this evening have stayed till 7.30 to, to watch you all. We're gonna upload the recording of this to our YouTube channel. So it's a Success at School YouTube channel and uh, we'll send it to, we'll send you a, a link to it if you've signed up through the Eventbrite notice and said we're allowed to send you an email. So if you've done that, we'll we'll, we'll send it to you automatically. Um, if you have any other questions, is there a email address they can um, se send any questions to, Ollie? Yeah, broadly speaking, if it's it's a general admissions question, I'll put my address in there, which is Oliver Stacey um, at southwales um, .ac uk. Um, however, I guess if it's a course specific one, it would just be um, the academic's name and then it would be the same handle. And I'm sure um, they'd be happy to take questions um, if it's specific to the subject. But if it's a broad, broad question, or I can always forward it on if needs be to, to the relevant people as well. We'll also like send that when we send out the email for the link, we'll send out just a little bit of info how you can access more information. So um, if you don't remember that, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll send out that info as well. Um, I just want to say thank you to to our speakers and guests and, and Ollie for, for for hosting. So um, if we're going to finish it up there, which uh, just gone seven thirty, and I, I'm sure all of you want to get on with your evening. Thanks very much for having us. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Thanks very guys. much. Busy you on. Thank you all. Cheers. Thanks everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye.